morning.
what you're stressing about today coming up this week, know that love is strong enough to support whatever you're going through. Bathe in it, rest in it, know it. It is yours from him ultimately. So we can just come together now to understand that we all have that identity of being loved by Christ. And we're going to take this moment now uh, just to greet one another, uh, just to know we're all here, all in his love, and enjoying this time together. Time to rise and shine. You may be seated. What a miserable day. I have long pants on. Thank you. It's like the first day in 200 days. Hey, welcome to Hope Community. My name is Bill. I'm the lead pastor here. And special day here. We have a special guest speaker, George from India. George, we've been practicing this. I know. Uh, anyways, we got a couple of announcements. Hey, if it's your first time here, we have a connect card. It should be in the seat, seat pocket in front of you. You fill this out and you take it to the hello table. Special uh, gift for you. Uh, basically, what this will do is it'll put you on our email list and we'll send out an email about once a week and we'll let you know what's going on here. Hope. If you got a bulletin as you came in, a bunch of things happening, especially this time of the year. First thing I'd like to announce, second service. During second service, we have Encounter Hope. Encounter Hope is basically our partnership class. It lets you know uh, our, uh, about our, our values and mission and, uh, and allows you to ask questions about the church. And then we don't do membership. We do partnership and uh, you could, uh, you'll learn about that if you choose to go to the class second service. It's just upstairs. Uh, I want to say in the Mount Rose room, but I know it's not the Mount Rose room. It's upstairs. There's three rooms up there. You'll figure it out. Trunk or treats coming up. Uh, we'd love to get your car uh, decorated to hand out uh, candy to our community and to celebrate and show the community that we love them. Uh, on your chair today. Uh, was just uh, a flyer to let you know that we're in that season. We give as a church to the community and to, uh, to plant churches in a number of different ways. But from this point on is we'll be focusing on trunk or treat. So you could bring candy in for trunk or treat. You could volunteer to decorate your car and to serve at trunk or treat. Then we have boxes of hope where we provide uh, Thanksgiving meals to families in need in our area. And then we have Adopt the Star in, in Christmas time. Now, we don't ask you to do everything. We ask you to do one thing. So as a church, our size, that if we all pick one thing to serve and to be generous at or with, is that we can make a, a little dent in the world around us. And so I encourage you to look at that and to be part of that, uh, be part of one of those things. I brought my bag of candy in. Now, I don't know if you saw the uh, the slide, but there's a slide what we did for Trunk or Treat this year uh, about you can order your candy online on Amazon. I hate to, you know, publicize Amazon, but if you go to Hope Community website and you go to events and you scroll down and you hit on candy, 
it just kind of takes care of itself. You guys can figure it out. You guys probably get enough boxes on your course stuff. So I get a box of sometimes two. Uh, hey, George is going to come up and speak in a moment. We've got communion. We're going to start here in a second. Uh, just to let you know, George brought a couple flyers to let you know what's going on in India. They'll be out by the mission uh, TV out there. Uh, I think that will be it. I'm going to pray here. We're going to start communion. But what do we, we've practiced this for several weeks now. Now you better be ready to make our friend feel welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Hey, we always celebrate communion here uh, every Sunday. We celebrate the Lord's Supper. So the ushers are going to come forward. Elements. Grab the bread, grab the juice. You want to partake with us? We got to sit there and pray. Long. Have it. Both of us. singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so Down, lie, you won't tear down coming 
recently came under a new understanding. Since I know you guys, um, <laughs> my son is three months old, and I want to speak to you parents out there. Which of you, if you heard that somebody deserves the death penalty, would offer your own child to die in their place? Do you have that kind of love for other people? I don't. <laughs> I can't even imagine it, but that is exactly what God did for us. We were enemies of God, and he offered his one and only son. We're all familiar, I'm sure, with John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17 goes on to say, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So often, you know, we think, well, how can loving God send people to hell? He doesn't. God has done everything in his power. He stopped at no expense to pull you back into relationship with him. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Romans 5.10, For if while we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, how much more? I think that God wants to speak to somebody today about how much he loves you. I looked at the um, order of service this morning before. I hadn't seen it until this morning after I prepared this message. And reckless love was right before communion. And then Stephanie gave that beautiful message about love. And my thing is all about love. I think that somebody needs to understand how much God loves, loves you. And I'm just going to go straight forward. I'm going to read you the story about the Last Supper, which is what we're celebrating today. 1 Corinthians 11, 23. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my, in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes god i thank you so much for the incredible love that you pour out on us i thank you that you stopped at no expense to bring us back to you i pray that you will just impress that upon us today just how much you love us I pray that you'll bless this service, bless George as he speaks to us, open up our ears and our hearts to receive what you have for us today in your name, in your name I pray Amen Thanks Rachel, that was beautiful Hey, we always use the Bible here uh, we have paperback Bibles we hand out uh, there's teaching notes on the back of your bulletin, if you are a fill in the blanker like I am uh, feel free to raise your hand, and we'll put a paperback Bible in your hand. Uh, it will be page uh, 926 of the paperback Bible, Matthew 28, if you have uh, your Bible uh, with you. And so uh, a couple things about uh, India. One of the things I was thinking about during worship that's really touched my heart, a couple weeks ago we baptized 44 people up at Tahoe at Hope Community, but... Uh, I just recall getting pictures from overseas and the number of people. We planted a church in India and uh, just seen uh, people getting baptized over in India. And this week uh, we planted a church in Iraq, seeing people getting baptized in Iraq. And so uh, it's just great to be part of Hope and uh, church planting around the world and church planting locally. And uh, you've heard me tell this story. I had a great time in India. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, the guy would be up there doing his announcements in Hindi, and then he would go, hallelujah, and everyone would go, hallelujah. And you guys did a pretty good job, right? George is going to get up here and say, that's an impressive American church that did hallelujah. And so you guys did a great job. So let's welcome George. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up, George.
Hallelujah. Oh, there it is. There it is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Bell, uh, for the opportunity to come back to Hope once again. I, I goofed up the schedule. I was supposed to be here several months ago, and I made a mistake, and I apologized to him, and I apologized to him again. But he is so gracious that he is letting me come back. Isn't that kind of him? <laughs> Thank you so much, Hope. You have been partnering with uh, Good News for India to plant churches and to make disciples. And we are so very grateful. And several of you, in addition to the church helping us, several of you individually help uh, to, to help some of the poorest of the poor children that we are serving. And thank you for partnering with us. And I want to say special thanks to Pastor Tom Tompkins, who is my twin brother. Don't we look like alike? We do. <laughs> uh, just grateful uh, to you uh, for be standing with us and helping us. We do continue to pray, and as Pastor Bill said, there is some literature out there, and the newsletter does have Pastor Bill's picture to prove that he did come to India. In case some of you don't believe him, please take the newsletter and see the picture. And he was there. And, and there is a powerful story of one of the young men who graduated this year. And, and Pastor Bill was part of the graduation service in the Bible College. And I, I think it will bless you if you... I don't think there is enough copies for all, but uh, hopefully you'll take it. I don't want to carry them back to India. But uh, please do take and uh, read and pray for us. And this red brochure will give you a little bit more information about the seminary, the Bible college. Uh, God is really blessing. Uh, and in the message, I'll say a few things about that. God is really blessing the work. Uh, because caring people like you, caring congregations like you, pray for us and partner with us and give sacrificially. So thank you so much. God bless you. Well, let's go directly into the message because we don't have much time in India. We preach a long time. I think I have told you about that before, but here we are limited for time because we are all so very, very busy people, right? So we have to get right into the message. The title of the message is Great Commission, the Job Description of the Church, as it is there, let me see whether this technology works. Oh, yes, it works. And, and it is found in seven different places in the New Testament. Did you know that? Different wording, but the central idea is found once in Matthew, once in Mark. Dr. Luke reports it three times, counting the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. And John reports it twice. It must be a very important thing, right? Otherwise, the New Testament will not repeat it seven times. Well, this morning, we don't have time to look at all seven. We will just look at one of them. It is the great, the last commandment the Lord gave us. And it is the job description of every disciple of Christ, every church. I often ask the question to my students, why did the Lord let you live all this time after he saved you? I was saved 51 years ago. I made a commitment, actually 52 years ago. When, what, why in the world did the Lord allow me to live all these 52 years after he got me saved? If his purpose in saving me was just to take me to heaven, he ought to have given me a heart attack 52 years ago and taken me home. Sometimes I wish he did that <laughs> because that would, have been, that would have been a lot easier, right? Facing life every day is tough. But see, the purpose for which he allows us to live is to glorify his name, is to share the gospel with others. And if you are a disciple of Jesus, and I hope you are, and may I stop here one minute? If you are not, call on him right now. Call on him right now. If you are not confident that 
your sins are not forgiven, that your name is not in the book of life, call on him. It's the simplest, easiest thing. For God so loved the world, that has been the theme already. He loves you so much that he died for you. The only thing we need to do, the Bible says, in Romans, the Apostle Paul has written it so beautifully. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. Gospel alone gives us this assurance. No other religion in the world gives us this assurance. I come from the land of religions. I know religions. I know Hinduism. I know Islam. I know Buddhism. I've studied it. No other religion gives this assurance. Gospel alone gives us this assurance. Not based on our goodness, not based on our merit, because none of us is good enough to stand before God. But if we call on him, he assures us that he will give us eternal life. And I hope you will. I hope you have done it. And if you have done it, you are a disciple of Jesus. You might say, I'm not a preacher. You might say, I'm not anybody. But listen, if you have called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a disciple. And therefore, this is our job description. We must take his commandments seriously. Why? Because the Bible demands that. What is the commandment? We'll just look at the first commandment, first occurrence in Matthew 28. 19 and 20, and you all have your Bibles there. Scripture is projected here. There we read in Matthew, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. It begins with that little word, therefore. To understand why Jesus uses that word, we just need to read the previous scriptures. Because he has conquered death and hell. He is the only one who has conquered death and hell. And therefore, all authority in heaven and earth is given to him. And based on that, he gives us this commandment. And what is the heart of that commandment? The heart of the commandment in Matthew. Matthew uses three participles, and one action word. All of you remember your high school grammar? Participle. Matthew uses three. Unfortunately, in English translation, it doesn't come through that clearly. Go, baptize, and teach are all participles. Only make disciples is a finite word. And it is in the imperative mode. So it's very simple, very simple. Three participles, one finite word. So I'll translate it as it is in the original, therefore, leaving out a few words. Therefore, going, baptizing, teaching. All three participles. Then one finite word. Make disciples of all nations. That is the command. That our Lord has given to us. And this is the job description of every church, every believer. And if we love him. Do you love Jesus this morning? I'm sure all of you will say, yes, I do. What is the evidence? Scripture makes it very clear. John 14, 15. If you love me. See, just telling with our mouth, Lord, I love you, is not enough. We are not saved by our obedience to him, but we obey because we are saved. Let me say it again. We are not saved by anything we do, but we do Obey him because we are saved, because we love him, because he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And to rush through this, so many scriptures in Matthew 14, Jesus repeats it 
again and again. 1421, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my, by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. You know this, I don't need to repeat it, but look at all these scriptures. Look at First John 2, 3 to 6. And by this we know that we have come to know him. What is the evidence that I really know Jesus? We obey him. Let me say it again. You know, it is, there is, it's a very difficult concept to understand because Christianity, the gospel teaches so clearly that none of us can be saved by what we do. But at the same time, Gospels, the New Testament teaches very clearly that there will be evidence for our salvation. The tree will be known by its fruit. The tree will be known by its fruit. So, the Apostle John can say, if we keep from his commandments, and then he goes on to say, look at that verse 4. Whoever says I know him, can you read that with me? Whoever says that I know him, but does not keep his commandments, he's a, uh-oh. Don't be upset with me. I'm not calling you a liar if you're not obeying God's script. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way as he walked. Let me go on. So this is a commandment. To make disciples of all nations. Who are to be made disciples? All nations. And unfortunately, the word nation changed its meaning in English. You all know this. I'm just reminding you. The Bible was originally translated into English. When? Uh oh, I thought St. Paul carried King James Bible. You know, I have really met people who think that. I was preaching in a church in Oregon several years ago, and I was quoting from NIV. A person came to me after the end of the service and was so angry with me because I was quoting from a, not a holy translation. He said, King James Bible. You know, if it, if it was good enough for Paul, it is good enough for me. Well, I'm sorry, King James Bible is only how many years old? 400 years old. Only 400. Bible was originally translated into English only in the 13th century. There are reasons to it. I don't have time to go into that. And when Bible was translated into English, nations did mean what it means in the Bible. But today, meaning completely changed. Today, as soon as you say the word nations, what do we think? We think of countries. We say nation of Canada, nation of United States, nation of India, nation of Mexico. That's not at all what Bible means by that word. What does Bible mean? The original word is the simple word ethna. Ethna is the plural. Ethnos is the singular from which we get our English word. One country politically here, right? But how many ethnics? How many ethnic groups are here? You know it better than I do. That's what Jesus meant. When we say, for God so loved the world, the Bible is declaring that God is not a respecter of persons. He loves all humanity. All humanity. So I always say, in a way jokingly, but really seriously, if you are a racist, Please don't go to heaven. You won't like it there. I'm serious. 
Stay out of there. Why? Because my God loves all. My God loves all. He loves as the little children sing. You know that little song that children sing? All the children of God. All the colors. All humanity because Jesus died for all. So the nations does not mean countries. Nations are people groups or ethnic groups. And how many are there? And if we have the heart of God... We will love all ethnic groups. We will not look down upon anyone based on their color, culture, or language because God loves all and he died for all. But did you know even today there are hundreds of ethnic groups that do not have access to the gospel? Yes, you know, because I know Pastor Bill talks about it. You're reaching out to nations, countries. Look at this number. My country of India alone has 4,693 ethnic groups. I want, you, I want you to really look at that number. I know for some of you, we all look the same, right? I know it's a silly joke, and a few laughed, but it's a serious issue. Serious issue. Well, if it, if it will make you any feel any better, when my wife and I first came to America way back in 1973, guess what? You understood, right? But in God's eyes, the people. The command applies to every one of us. And our Lord is waiting for us to complete the job. I had the great privilege of studying under a very famous New Testament scholar by the name George Eldon Ladd. I hope serious students of New Testament would love his books. And Dr. Ladd often used to say, don't preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all ethna, all ethna, and then the end will come. The Lord is waiting for us to complete the work that he has entrusted with us, and I'm so glad that this church is a church that is mission-minded. I ought to be preaching this sermon in churches that are not mission-minded, but they won't let me preach, so I how to preach here. See? But look at Revelation 5. Revelation 5 is one of my favorite chapters of the Bible. If I had time, I would preach on this for one hour. No matter what your eschatology is, no matter whether you are pre or post or mid or what trib, everybody agrees in Revelation 5, the church is in the presence of God. And look at that picture of the church there. Look. Who is being worshipped there? I have to rush through this. Revelation 5, 8, And when we had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Oh, what a glorious day that will be when the whole church, represented by four living creatures and 24 elders, 24 elders 
symbolic representation of the whole church. 12 plus 12 makes 24. 12 patriarchs of the Old Testament, 12 apostles of the New Testament. Together the whole church is going to worship who? The Lamb. The Lamb that is slain. Who is the Lamb that is slain? Jesus. This scripture alone is enough to refute both Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses. Both have wrong Christology. Both teach that Jesus ought not to be worshipped. Did you know that? Romans, uh, Revelation 5 alone will refute that theology because here, look, the church is being worshipping the Lamb that is slain. And look at the song they are singing to the Lamb. Look at this song. It's an amazing song. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and by your blood you ransomed people for God. Oh, I love that. Next scripture. From every tribe, every language, every people and every ethna, ethna. And you have made them a kingdom of priests, kingdom and priests to your God, and they shall reign on earth. I get excited when I read that scripture. Because even though today there are still hundreds of ethnic groups, not just in India alone, in other countries of the world, that are still waiting to have a church of their own, the promise is given in Revelation that it will, the church will have members in every tribe, in every group. But this is not true yet. It's not true yet. Hundreds of ethnic still don't have a church of the lamb that is slain. And it is our responsibility. It is the, must be the focus of every committed Christian who truly loves Jesus to reach the remaining ethnic groups, to reach the remaining nations. And the Lord called us, many of you know our story, we were working in Southern California and the Lord called us back to North India to start a ministry called Good News for India with this focus, just this one focus alone, reach the unreached ethna. I'm sorry the picture is too small that you cannot see Pastor Bill there, but he is there in that picture. He was part of our graduation service last year. And by God's grace, by God's grace, since our beginning, we have trained over 3,000 men and women, primarily with this message, reach the unreached. And many, many of those 3,000 are doing exactly that. And all we give all glory to God and we thank congregations like you that help us to train and send out and support men and women to go and preach the gospel to those who ha never have even opportunity to hear the gospel. And this congregation is responsible particularly, I think all of you know Pastor Frame's name. He just underwent a surgery this past week. He had an accident and he broke his leg, which in the area where he is working, he didn't get proper medical attention, and as a result, complications developed. So we had to bring him to the seminary, to Dharadun, to a Christian hospital nearby, and just, he came from a Hindu family. I wish I had time to tell you the story. I think Pastor Bill might have told you a little bit about him. He met him and talked to him while he was in India. Through a miraculous healing, he came to know the Lord. And the Lord called him to preach the gospel. We trained him. And he went back to his own people. Very difficult place. A place called Jonpur in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Where hardly anyone was there as a believer. But today, because of this young man. And he's not very highly educated. He does not come from a wealthy background, a poor community, an unreached ethnic group. And because of his hard work, now we have hundreds of believers in that part of India, in Johnpur, UP. The congregation is too large for all of them to meet at, at together, and opposition is strong, but they are meeting, and they are worshipping the lamb that is slain in that area of India. Thank you for standing 
with us to make such ministries possible. Hundreds have come to know the Lord through his ministry and through his uh, witnessing. So because of, as I said, because of opposition, they cannot gather together. Uh, and we are, you as a church is helping us and we are praying that we can buy a piece of land there and build a structure where they all can come together and worship. But currently the atmosphere is not safe enough for that. So we are just waiting. But sooner, I hope soon we will be able to do that. Pray, pray with that. And John Poor and there are hundreds of places like that in India that desperately need the gospel. And when you stand with ministries such as ours, we are able to reach them. You have not only done this, you have helped us to buy motorcycle for another one of our brothers who is serving the Lord. And you're, and as I already said, several of you are helping and desperately poor children. So let's take the commandment of our Lord seriously. So my question as we close is, are you a great commission Christian? You might tell me, well, George, I cannot go as a missionary to a place. Yeah, that's, that's true. But that's not what Jesus told us. That every one of you can do our part in obeying the last commandment of our Lord Jesus. How can we do that? I close by giving you a few concrete suggestions. Number one, start praying for the unreached ethna of the world. Do you pray for them? Answer it yourself only. Or are your, is your prayer life confined to your own personal needs alone? The Lord taught us a little prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. And I know all of you know it by heart. And often we repeat it. Our children, my parents taught that me as an infant. Pray that. My mom was very strict. Unless I pray the Lord's Prayer in the morning and the evening, she would not be happy with me. But what is, what is the purpose of that prayer? Nothing wrong in repeating it. But I believe there is a, it is a pattern of prayer. Have you noticed that little prayer? What the first three requests are in that prayer? First three requests have to do with his name, his kingdom, his will. Is that a priority in your prayer life? And what is his will? What is his desire? What is the purpose for which he came? So let's start praying. Lord, let thy kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your name be lifted up and glorified among the people who do not know you. So the two great tools I already recommended, if you will go to the joshuaproject.net and download that app, it will help you to pray for one ethnic group every day. Not just in India, but all through the world. And if you're not a person who is used to using such tools, buy the book called Operation World, which will help you to pray through the world, the whole world. India will take one month to pray through. And the rest of the world. It will help you to pray. Let's start praying. And then start sharing the gospel with people. In your city, there are nations from the world. You know that better than I do. Befriend some students in the university. I, we were just Last night, we were with Dr. Keith Dennett, one of the professors, and, and he was just telling me several students from Bangladesh are there. Bangladesh is a country where there is very limited freedom to preach the gospel, but they are here in your neighborhood. Open your homes to those international students especially the ones who come from difficult parts of the world. Befriend them. Share the gospel with them. Share the gospel with your neighbors. And then, are you giving to missions sacrificially? Will you go on short-term missions? We would love to have you come to India. Next time Pastor Bill comes, come along with him. We'll give you the best chicken curry in the world. Thank you for listening to us. If you want to know more about what we do in India, there is our webpage. Would you close your eyes with me? 
Would you bow your heads with me? Would you ask yourself this question seriously this morning? Am I a great commissioned Christian? Am I obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the last commandment he gave to the church? If not, starting today, I want to be a great commissioned Christian. I want to pray for people who have not had the chance to hear the gospel. I want to do whatever I can. Will you say that to the Lord this morning? And will you make a commitment to him? Because if you are a disciple of Jesus, you must obey him. Because he said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Father, I thank you for Hope Community Church, for every person who heard your word today. If anyone is here today, Lord, who does not know you as his or her personal savior, I pray you give that person the grace to call upon you this morning and become a disciple of Jesus. And all of us who do know you, we are your disciples. Help us to have the grace to obey you, O oh Lord, especially as it concerns the unreached of the world. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for speaking to us. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Do pray for us. And do take this literature from the back. It will help you to pray for us. God bless you. All right, well, we're going to continue with some worship if you guys want to stand up and join us.
there were walls between us. By the cross, you came and broke them down. You broke them down. There were chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. cards in the pockets of those chairs and we just ask that you fill it out you can either drop it in the joy boxes or at the hello table out in the foyer and um, if uh, we have a gift for you too if it's your first time here and then if you would like prayer we always have someone over by the cross in the corner there who'd love to pray with you I hope you have a wonderful week <laughs>